step one is open up the program to record. Step two <coughs> is arming to record. I kind of like that. Arm it to record. Because you know what? I take my glasses off and I record so I can see. Does that make sense? It shouldn't make sense. Do I make sense ever? Ah, it's episode 54 of What the Pat. Let's kick it off. Where's my intro music? Where is it? It's around here somewhere. I'm looking for it. I'm going to find it. Cue it up. Let's go. I am Paticus, and you're the Patikins. I would like to apologize for skipping a week. Last weekend was insane. I know it's no excuse. You're like, but you could just record ahead of time. If I only knew how difficult it was to record. Then you might give me a little bit of a break. I do have other places to record, but I have I have my desk. That's where I like to record. And it's where I find I get the best quality. And I want to give you the listener the best quality possible because if it's crappy, you don't want to listen. Plus, not too much was going on. I mean, it is the new year. We could take time to reflect on 2019. And um, the best way I reflect on that is looking at photos, what videos I have. And uh, sometimes I scroll through Facebook. But I don't spend too much on Facebook anymore. I've found it not to be a load of fun, really. I mean, I can catch up with who I want to catch up. And uh, I actually talk to those I feel like talking to outside of Facebook. Of course, some really good friends are on Facebook, and that's just how we interact and don't use other platforms. But uh, I did uh, I, I did gain a friend, which is cool. I, I think I can say Jonathan's a friend now. And uh, one, I don't even know what you look like, which is cool. I'll have my own visual uh, of what you do look like per what you say. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jonathan, of course, of... Uh, Discord Accords with Stephen and Jonathan, and also he has a new podcast out. You probably want to know the name of it, so you can check it out. And it's on Anchor, so that's the platform you can go to. It's an app you can download for Apple or Android, and you can also listen online. But, oh, the name of the podcast? That would be Silver Screen Video. And again, it's on Anchor, and the website is anchor.fm. You can go there. That's also the platform I use so you can leave voicemails and such. And I'm not sure if you can get it on Google Podcasts or Apple. So I think it's cool. They're using it. It's a free platform to do your podcasting. They've made it really simple. And I wish I'd found it back when I first started doing mine because that's the route I would have stuck to. And I might transfer over eventually. But yes, and apps for both Apple and Android. So they don't leave anybody out kind of get annoyed when that happens see a cool app i'm like damn it's only made for apple that sucks what else have i been up to well i'm still sticking with ddpy which is diamond dallas page's yoga program which i've said before and he says it too it's not your typical yoga because some people like i just don't do yoga but i personally actually really enjoy doing yoga even regular yoga i love the moves and the flexing and all that And I am beyond not flexible, which I'm getting there. I'm currently at Beginner 2.0, which a couple of the new programs have kicked my butt. And I'm fixing to kick off week eight next week. I haven't updated my photos just to see where I stand, but I feel like I'm making improvements, which is hard. It takes, I mean, you're looking at eight weeks. That's roughly two months. And it takes time for change and keeping going. And some days I I don't feel like working out or doing it. But then I look at how long the workouts are. Some of them are 15 minutes, and I'm like, I can knock this bitch out. I can knock it out and get it done and keep going because you have to push through that wall. Sometimes you can't let shit kick you in the balls and keep you down. Damn, speaking of that, I need. there's a company called Nutsack. They make just that, bags. And I was like, damn, Nutsack, that's a funny name. I should check them out. Look at me sidetracked. Also, what's cool, if any of you are fire, police, military, you can get 50% off, which that's why I jumped. I was like, you know, I can't pass this up. And that works for the DVDs or the app, which I kind of recommend the app. It has so much to it 
and you get points so you can earn stuff. So it's another motivational factor there. He puts up a video every Monday to motivate you to do this. And there's other videos on there and everything else. And it seems like a really great group. And like I said before, what really drew me in was how he went around picking up broken wrestlers, dusting them off and showing them there is more and you can do this and come with me on this path I'm taking. And his support for military and police fire and all of that too. And even just regular people. I mean, he's helped so many people through this program, which is wickedly cool. There's also nutrition, which I haven't followed yet because I do like my junk food, which maybe one day I'll get there. And as I said before, I'm not a person who worked out. I did in high school through wrestling. I actually enjoyed weightlifting. Um, I couldn't, I I wasn't bulky because I have these long stringy muscles, but I always enjoyed seeing how far I could push myself and what I could do. And it was pretty cool. And I was in decent shape. And then in the Navy, I think I maintained. And then when I got out, I screwed up my knee. And that was kind of weird to gain a ton of weight. I, I have pictures. I'm like, dang, I was, I was Mr. Doughboy. Then probably eight years ago, Allison and I joined a fitness group. And we were actually going at least four or five times a week. And it was a program that we really enjoyed. That's when we got introduced to TRX. Uh, Les Mills programs that were really cool and I didn't I enjoyed them I had fun and I really didn't see results until after we stopped going and I looked at pictures and I was like dang I was really on a good path but we got derailed because something happened with Allison's health which was weird because we were being very healthy and then she got really sick and we, we still don't know what happened but that kind of really made us just drop everything and rethink what we were doing as uh, we went down the bad food chain again (laughs) which is weird i don't know i'm not even sure how i'm talking do you even care about this really maybe you do maybe you're like wow more insight to pat who is what the pat why the pat why Really, I'm just happy that I've stuck with DDPY this long. I plan to continue it because I do enjoy it even though I have my days. Much like podcasting, sometimes this can be very hard. It, it's sometimes tough to just wheel up to the mic and be like, Hey everybody, welcome to the show. We're going to snowball down if there. Ha ha It can't always be laughs, right? Sometimes. Maybe. Did I go see some movies other than Star Wars? I did. Am I going to tell you about it? Probably. Am I going to talk about some TV? I think so. Also, started an audiobook. Uh Huh? Yeah, because I got so much fucking free time. Free time. Time's what you make it. If you listen to Tony Robbins, motivational speaker, and he's, like, amazingly tall, really interesting guy to listen to, and I've brought him up before. He's like, you have the time. Just get up an hour earlier. And I'm like, not yet, Tony. Not yet. My sleep's important. Especially when I get good sleep. I really, I covet, I covet the sleep. And over the past couple weeks, I actually made it to bed before 11 o'clock a couple times, which can be difficult. I do enjoy staying up late. And I do a little bit of light breathing before I pass out in bed. So, let's talk the latest movie I saw. Should have like a film reel making movie sounds right now, cueing us in. And there we go. So I'm sure I brought up Bad Boys for Life trailer months ago, and I was like, ah, I don't know. Why isn't Michael Bay directing? Who is this guy directing? Things look a tad off. The colors kind of seem there, the cinematography. And then I thought, why are you complaining? You have Regal Unlimited. Just go see it. It's the third one. Plus, you get to see Will Smith and Martin Lawrence together again as two characters that you actually enjoy. So after my acupuncture appointment, I went and saw it. Did I enjoy it? I had fun. It it lacked some of the charm from the first two, but for a third one, it was decent and... I can now see at the end of it where they're going with it all. So, 
I think halfway through I said to myself, you know, this could actually turn into a Fast and Furious franchise if you really worked at it and everything. I didn't think ah, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence were up to par from the last two. I know a lot of people didn't like the second one, but I had a lot of damn fun at that one. And uh, The third one is okay. They're bad boys for life. There were some good comedic things. Some of the camera shots were really cool, and I liked how they did it. I read one review which um, said it felt like a video game. And after reading that, I was like, that's the feeling I was getting. So that was pretty neat. Not the whole thing, because that would probably make you sick. But the last, I don't know, 20 or so minutes of action is pretty cool. Of course, fake as shit (laughs) in real life. But what they did with it and everything was great. And it's just, there were a couple things I just didn't care for. But on a whole, for a third one and not having to pay to see it, because if I would have paid, I would have been like, eh, let down. It was all right. I mean, if we were to go stars on this, I'd probably give it two and a half out of five, maybe a three, because it tried to keep some cohesion with the other two, and uh, which is cool, because the color... <laughs> Excuse me. Whoa. <laughs> Let's take a coffee break. Coffee break. I need a, probably a sound bite for that, too. Coffee break. Get whatever that was in there, and uh, what was I saying? Oh, it... it, it kept the colors and all that it was it was colorful and one thing i don't get is when they do prison scene why are the prisons so dark we're gonna put four lights in the laundry room um this makes no sense to me it's a prison it should be well lit is is it cost more to put more light bulbs in on your budget it's confusing i'm like wow that is one dark prison no wonder they get away with shit so, yeah, if you enjoyed Bad Boys 1 and 2, you might enjoy it. It's it's a hit and miss for people. People either really love it or they don't they could take it or leave it. So, there you go. Yes. And Dr. Doolittle, I hope to get a chance to go see it. Because I've heard mixed reviews on that, too. But I, I dig Robert Downey Jr. I've, I have loved his acting since, like, Pickup Artist. Less Than Zero threw me for a loop. Um, and all the other stuff he's done um chaplin if you haven't seen chaplin that is just amazing someone i think i saw an article is like can robert downey jr really act oh, fuck yes he can really act okay so i dig the guy so i want to see Doolittle. it looks cool and i dig animals and uh i'm sure most of them are fake why not you could do that nowadays right besides i don't think they talk other than mr ed did I mention we finished the second season of You? What a fun show. I'm if I didn't mention it before. I really enjoyed the show. There's some it's I there's dark comedy. I think this is dark dark comedy. Because I, maybe I shouldn't be laughing at some of the stuff, but it's it's kind of twisted and different. I really didn't want to see it in the beginning because I'm like, oh, a show about a stalker. Yawn. But then like I said, it got a second season and I'm like, well, maybe I should watch it. So we watched it and enjoyed it and I believe it's eight episodes yeah I'd have to look it up not gonna do that but there and then uh, started flaked with uh, Will Arnett really interesting show I can take or leave him sometimes depending on his comedy and um, he's really he's really mellow in this and I really enjoy him and the other actors in it there's some pretty funny stuff in it I thought it would be funnier than what it is but it's it's a little it can be sad at moments. It has its moments. So it's, I don't know how it got listed as a comedy. It's weird how Netflix does that. But that's why I picked it. I'm like, Will Arnett, it might be funny. Who knows? So flaked and um, got sucked into Ultimate Beastmaster. It's got three seasons. Uh, Stallone, I believe, produces it. And uh, it's kind of like American Ninja Warrior, where they got these obstacles. And let me tell you, I wish I could go play on this stuff because I probably wouldn't even barely make it across the balance beam they have to walk across just to get up into the beast to be like, he's done, he didn't make it. But just seeing what people's bodies can do on these obstacle courses is just incredible and how in shape people are to do what they can do. So if you like that kind of stuff, it's it's pretty neat to watch. It's inspiring too because you're like, man, 
I bet I could do that if I really worked at it. Oh, that's the key. Work at it. Huh. Go figure. And music. Jeez. Nothing really of late to bring up. Dirty Honey, a group I've talked about before, does a cover of an Aerosmith tune, which I'll tr- try. I should remember to link it in the notes. Um, oh, what was the song? Last Child. Really great cover. Uh, embodies their sound, but they kind of sound Aerosmith-like, so they pulled it off really well. I wouldn't say... I'm sure bands get tired of like, wow, you sound like Led Zeppelin. Well, fuck, who doesn't sound like what? Wow, you sound like the Beatles. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, do you want my latest rant? <laughs> I think this all comes about because there you, uh, there might still be these videos where it's like, this piece of trash on the sidewalk is not what's interesting. Watch and be amazed at what happens next. And then you get sucked into some of that stuff of like, watch this anaconda eat a shark. But that's not the crazy part. You should watch what's happening next. Now I think the latest is why we do things wrong. The latest, I didn't even read it because I'm like, fuck you, is uh, (laughs) we've been brewing coffee wrong for all these years. Well, shit, we're all a bunch of dummies. Uh, And I didn't open it because it's probably something stupid like, you should use a paper filter instead of the metal filters because of what's fossil through the geo. Just shut up. Why do we have to have those articles? Dumb. You've been doing it all wrong. Dumb. Dumb. There's my rant. Dumb with that. Ugh. Clear my throat. Um, did I tell you I have a game cam and we've been watching the porcupine who's... Yeah, I. we put the game can in a different area and I saw the porcupine with the hurt paw still cruising around and there i am again going god how do i help you i wish your paw was better probably can't climb a tree like that all of that from talking about dirty hunt last child i'll do my best to link you up in the notes if you dig aerosmith and it's kind of shitty what they did to joey kramer drummer if you haven't read that i don't know i don't know both sides of the story but yeah They're like, oh, you can't be the drummer anymore because you can't play as well as you used to, so you have to try out again for the band. What? I get it. Okay. Move on. Ah, let's just take a breath. Should be another coffee break. It's Death Wish today. Oh, (laughs) shocking, right? Ah, I could talk about the smart home because we do have a Generac generator, but here was my concern. How do I know when I'm away that it's going to start because it's set up to start remotely if power is cut because that's the whole idea so you don't have to worry their their device you can get they sell a device which you I think is like a couple hundred bucks and then you have to pay for the monthly service so it'll transmit to you that's stupid I get people gotta make money but come on the, the thing already costs two arms a leg and maybe part of an ear to have some peace of mind how about just put that in too I don't think it's it's hard. And then the reviews on it were like, man, this thing's a hunk of shit. So, because our generator is close enough to the house, they have these uh, sensors you can get that uh, Smart Things makes, which is a Samsung uh, product. It's a multi sensor, multi pass. So, um, where am I going here? So it's it's actually I think they designed it for doors or windows so you know when they open, but it also has a vibration feature where if someone knocks on the door to let you know. And broken glass. So if someone breaks glass, it'll sense that too. So I thought because the generator vibrates when it starts, I could just mount this inside and then it would send me a notice. Lo and behold, it does. It works. It's great. The only drawback I see is when we drop below like 27 degrees the the things outside have trouble and it really hurts the battery in them so it may it's a cheap fix right now which is great in the summer because i'm sure the battery will keep going great then but uh, it works when the generator starts i get a notification which gives a peace of mind the real test will be when we actually lose power because i wonder if losing power it starts sends the notification because everything turns off for a bit and takes a while to boot back up how well that will work. The nice part is if I'm away, I know the generator starting um, on its daily Saturday thing. So that gives a bit more of peace of mind. See where I'm going there? Got that? So 
There you go. Smart home. Bye, Pat. And I prefer Google Home over Alexa. And Hubitat is my smart home device uh, hub of choice. That thing is incredible. I did pick up the smart things hub because it gave a few more features with the uh, sensors I talked about. But that was all still way cheaper than the Generac thing. Bob. Hopefully I'm not coughing too much for some reason. I have a frog in my throat. Do you hear it? Ask me open up my mouth, see if you can hear it. No, okay. Let's end it. The audiobook I recently picked up. Uh, 13 Bullets. Jonathan recommended this, and it sounded pretty interesting. It's about vampires. And I'm halfway through, and I really dig it. He said there's five in the series. Three of them are great. The last two kind of go off the rails and are, uh, you know. I guess that can happen. You bite off more than you can chew. But I enjoy the audiobook because I certainly don't have time to read and I'm not a reader as I said. So halfway through and I really, it it took a little bit to kind of get the rhythm of it because podcasts are different and radio shows are different because you get music and it's more immersive. So with the audiobook, you really have to focus and it's like, you know, someone reading you a story. Just getting used to it. But yeah, 13 Bullets. I'll try and link that in the show notes too. But now I think I'm going to close this frog up in my throat and get rolling with this day before it gets ahead of me and I get behind. But I think I'm always behind. Maybe not. Maybe you are. So 2020 is here, folks. Let's make the best of it together. If you want to, you know, voicemail me and be like, Pat, I'm working out. This is what I plan to do. That'd be cool to hear what your plans are for 2020. What do you have planned? I mean, it's such a cool year, 2020. I mean, really, it's like locking in your vision. This year, I'm locked in. I got 2020 going. What do you got going on? I plan to stick with DDPY. There's a psycho push-up that I'm going to try and achieve. I don't know if I can achieve it this year but I'm going to work towards it. If you don't know what that is, I'll try to remember to link that in the show notes. Mind you, when you see Diamond Dallas Page doing it, his L5 and L6 are bone on bone when he's doing it. That's how he ended up doing yoga to begin with. But anyway, when you see this, you you probably will be like, holy shit, and the dude's 63. (laughs) Just showing you what you can do. He's got tremendous flexibility, which is crazy, so I'd like to get there. Because I can't even sit cross-legged anymore. Man, it's not because I got muscular legs. What Gutter it, whatever, I'm out. Yeah, leave me a voicemail. Tell me what you got planned for this year. Even if you don't have plans and you're like, 2020 is the year I'm going to sit on my ass. It is what you make it. That's what it is. So there you go. When you're out and about, smile at a stranger, give them a little wink and say, how you doing? Or good day. Spread some positive out there. And if someone writes an article that says, this is what you're doing wrong, throw up your fingers and be like, fuck you. I enjoy my coffee this way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the close of the show. Rustling of my notes. Got lots of notes. Get them ready. So, all right. Done. Hanging up. Don't, you just, I would, you may leave your headphones in because there could be a little bit of something toward. One last thing. Totally forgot. Because I had another heart rate monitor. But your heart rate monitor links to the DDPY app, which is cool because it shows you where you're at. And you get more points. But I picked up the uh, Wahoo, W-A-H-O-O. It's the arm arm version because I don't like the chest heart rate monitor. Ticker fit. Way cool. Syncs right up. It's very neat. And their app is neat if you use it to do works, works outs and stuff. So there you go. Another plug for something I don't get paid for. Oh wait, you should do things because you enjoy it. And then getting paid would be the cool part of the whole Uh Kevin did try to call and leave you a voice message. Message there. Uh, oh, hey, I'm back. It's not quite over yet. Hold on. Stop the... Stop. Our press is even... Anyway, he says, Hey, Pat. Binge listener here, longtime friend here. Thanks for the reviews on the boys on Prime and suggestion on drinking Death Wish coffee. As for movies, since you like Monty Python, what is your screen turned off? There, get back. 
As for movies, since you like Monty Python, what is your opinion of the movies A Fish Called Wanda and Fierce Creatures? I have seen A Fish Called Wanda, and I loved it and found it very funny. I haven't seen Fierce Creatures yet. And music-wise, while I don't have these bands first on my playlist necessarily, I'm excited to be seeing this July, Europe, Foreigner, and Kansas. What are your opinions of those bands? I think Europe is underrated, and they are actually a pretty good band once you get past Final Countdown and possibly Carrie, because you know those are the hits. But otherwise, Europe, I think they're an outstanding band. Foreigner? I miss the Lou Graham days. I think they have a new singer, but I still dig Foreigner. I actually saw them at a fair when I was uh, back in um, oh, in San Diego when I saw them, because I won tickets. And Kansas, top-notch band. So that's what I think. Thanks for texting in, Kevin. Your voicemail didn't work. And I am, uh, here's the mic drop. Catch you later, Patikins. I am Patikins.